Hey guys, it's Mo. So today I have for you another Inkscape video. Um, Inkscape and Cricut Design Space video. Today I'm going to share with you how to make an offset or sort of like a bubble around a phrase or a set of words in Inkscape and upload it to your Cricut Explorer so that you have that nice like offset or bubble around words when the Cricut Explorer cuts out your stickers. Um, first off, I want to mention again that I use Inkscape to design all of my stickers. It's sort of like a third party program. And the reason that I don't design in Cricut Design Space or either in Silhouette Studio software is because I want to have access to my files if in case I decide to get rid of both of my machines. Let's say that another machine comes out and it's so great, I just, I have to have it and I want to get rid of both my sh machines. I'll have access to my um, files. I won't have to convert them. It won't be a pain in my ass. It will just, I'll just have them. So Inkscape is a free design software. It's a free illustration program. You just go to inkscape.org and download it. It is much like Adobe Illustrator. It functions a lot like Adobe Illustrator. And so today I'm going to show you how I add text, how to create an offset, how to break apart the letters and what you need to do to actually create that offset. So first off, I wanted to share with you um, where I find a lot of my fonts. So I get them at Creative Market. Now creativemarket.com is a creative market. It's got a whole bunch of things. Um, uh, what do you call those? Like um, stock photos. It's got themes, templates or whatnot. But the fonts is what I really, really love because they have these amazing font bundles. So you can see this one is $19 and you get all of these fonts here. This one is $29 and you get all of these fonts. And you can see there are amazing, amazing like script hand lettered sort of fonts that you can get and like I said the font bundles are the things I recommend the most just because you're getting the most bang for your buck and most of the time you're going to get the uh, commercial use um, what do you call it commercial use license as well now I will say make sure you read what you're buying make sure you're reading the terms of use I'm not going to tell you to do something that you're not allowed to do you need to understand the terms of use when you purchase something um, another place to find free fonts is dafont.com so this is a place that I love to use to find free fonts and you can see here it says like free for personal use a lot of these say free for personal use um, you can also click on the script font here and if you go under this like search category, you can type in one or you can click on 100% free and hit submit. And that's going to find you fonts that are 100% free. Now, like I said, make sure that you are looking at the license when you download them. Um, some Something might be included in there that is not true. You know, you just need to make sure that you are understanding and doing your research and understanding and following, you know, what you're supposed to be doing. So let's move back into Inkscape. I'm going to write a phrase and let's see here. Actually, let's just click. It's going to be weekend away. So I'm going to change this font here, come on now, to be shorelines. And we'll change this one Cool. So then most of the time when I'm typing up my little like phrases, I won't type them all in one box. I will type a few words, like if it's a quote, I will type a few words and see how I like them to be situated together and not just type it all in a box and hope it looks good. So um, sometimes, you know, oh, maybe like if I typed it like that, would it look good? Maybe I like it right here. Maybe I want it over here. So I think I want this one right here. So I'm going to use a lot of shortcut keys here. I'm going to hit the control key and I'm going to zoom in just so I can see what I'm doing. And you can see the way this is rendering, it's cutting off the W there, but don't worry about that. It's just the way that the computer is rendering it. Once we get everything situated the way we need to, it's going to be fine. So you want to drag and select all. You want to hold shift control on your keyboard and hit G and then hit C and then hit G. I'm not sure which ones you're supposed to hit first, so I just hold shift control and then hit C a few times, hit G a few times, and then hit C again, and then hit G again. What you want is to break up all of these letters. So as an example, here's this one. We've hit shift control C and G a few times until we've broken up the path. Now you can see that you can't click on it and change it like we did before. Um, where we typed it out, whoops, can't spell, 
double clicked on it and we were able to delete things, type things back in, change the font, etc. With this, now every letter is its individual path. Same with this. So now what we want to do is join all of these paths together to create one um, object. So again, drag and select it all. Hold down um, the shift and the control key, and then you're going to hit the plus key on the top row of your keyboard right next to the backspace button. And that joins everything together. You can see they're no longer individual letters. You can also see that we've made a union because these are individual. If we right click and select group or we do control G, that groups everything. Shift control G ungroups everything. So we haven't done this to this section here. We've created an actual path, uh, an object together. We've unioned all of the paths. So if we hit shift control G, nothing's happening. It's not ungrouping because we've created a whole path. So that is the first key to making the offset. I do have a video before when I didn't really understand making offsets about making an offset using the fill uh, bounded areas button. We're not going to do that here. We're going to do control D. That's going to make a duplicate of it. You can see that because it's right there. So control D. Then you're going to hold down the control key and hit the um, parentheses button right above the zero, and that's going to make your offset. Now, you can choose to do your offset as big or as small as you want, um, and it's going to depend on what you're trying to do um, on how big you do want your offset, but pretty much the guidelines are slightly bigger and make sure things touch like this. So now we have an offset here. And what we can do is change the color. I'm going to change it to pink and I'm going to send it to the back. So now you can see you have this bubbly offset around here. I'm going to use, I'm going to delete these here, my control key and I'm going to zoom in again. Now, if we double click on this, you can see where all of the little nodes are. I'm going to bring this back to the front so we can see it better. Sometimes you'll get these little nodes in the middle um, and sometimes you'll get this little weirdness right here. Um, if you don't like it, we can just change it. So the Cricut Explorer is going to cut around. Once we've grouped this and exported this as a PNG, the Cricut Explorer is going to cut around here. And it's also going to cut this, and it's also going to cut this. Now, obviously, we don't want that cut there. If you want this cut between the letters, that's completely up to you. I'm going to remove those holes. I'm just going to double click on this. And pretty much what you can do is just click on the little nodes and delete them. Now, if you have something that has a lot of nodes and it might take a little bit longer, you can click on a node and then use your scroll wheel and you can on your mouse and you can see how it's selecting these nodes here. I'm just going one at a time and doing that. Now, let's see if I can show you. So sometimes you're not as on the, I don't know, on the node as you think you are. And you just saw that little scroll up and down that I did. So I just kept scrolling around until I was highlighting them. You can see they're becoming highlighted here. If you scroll too far and you start highlighting the things that are out here, that can be bad because when you delete it, you're creating a funky little line here. Again, I'm not a professional guy. So these words that I'm using, like, they're not technical terms. So I'm just going to hit Control Z. That's going to bring this hole back. I'm just going to click on this. And you can see I wasn't able to scroll on it, so I'm just going to delete it and delete it. So now we have all of these nodes the way we want them. If you want to play with this down here and maybe like delete that and something and see how you feel about it, you can do that as well. Then we'll send it to the back here. So now we have, this says weekend away, and we have the bubble around it. You, obviously, you don't want this to print. You may you may want it to print that way. I don't know. You don't want it to print with a red background. So we're just going to change it to white. So then you just highlight everything. You can here change it to B. If you're going to make a sticker sheet, which I will leave a link below to how to make a sticker sheet. And I think there is in there also about making an offset, perhaps. I'm not quite sure. But if you want to make a sticker sheet, you just group these together. It's easier to make a sticker sheet when you have this changed to different color. Group it together. 
size it the way you want so we can see this is two, over two and a half inches wide that's kind of big unless that's how the size you want it maybe we want to make it 1.5 inches the size of a um, a header make sure your proportions are locked mine weren't that's why it turned funky there so one and a half inches um, then you'll make your um, sticker sheet background and size it to be I think it's six point seven five by nine point two five bring make sure this guy is grouped so I grouped him together I selected everything here and hit control G and that groups everything together we're gonna bring him to the front here go to align I have a in-depth um, how to make a sticker sheet kind of guy here so we're just aligning it I do control D a few times align this do it that way so now we have that and I'll make one more two more maybe so now we have a whole sticker sheet of weekend away stickers now you're thinking oh my gosh the whole uh, background it's so weird why are these pink so we just ungroup or shift control G, G as in girl, G as in golf. Right click, select one of the backgrounds, one of these pink backgrounds, right click, select same, fill color, go to fill and stroke, change it all to white. Now we can select all, make sure selection and 300 here is clicked on. If you don't see this, you can go to file, export PNG image, and it should bring this up in your sidebar, bar. selection, export as and then click where you want to save it um, da, da, da. we'll save it in here um, that doesn't save it though you gotta click export and again if you want to come back to this and edit it again you're gonna have to go to file save as and save this it as an Inkscape SVG so that you can edit this again. Now, you should realize though that we've made this a path, like I said before, so you're not going to be able to change this text. You would have to make something completely different. Um, but it's always helpful to just sh shave, to just save your work. So now we go to Cricut Design Space. Um, we can start a new project. We will go to do, do, do images I honestly haven't done this in like a long time oh upload I don't know what my problem is so we go to upload image here you're gonna browse and find where you saved that let's see here Google Drive where did I save that at Cricut, Cricut SVGs um, weekend away it's a PNG and if you can see the checkerboard behind this then good job you've done it correctly a PNG is a transparent has a transparent background you can also see the little bubble around here so we'll click on complex image I always click on complex image click continue we don't have to clean it up unless you've added your logo or somewhere on here you don't have to clean it up you can see this little bubble around here that means that Cricut is going to cut around each of these guys like this so hit continue make sure you save it as a print then cut image and name it what you need to name it um, so make sure you save it as a print and cut image and click on save I love how this is slightly faster than it used to be but it's not lightning fast like it could be and as I'm saying this this is taking longer than I expected it to so click on it insert images it's going to size it to be really, really big. So whenever you design something a specific size, make sure you remember that size. So this is 6.75 by 9.25, this whole image here that we exported. So we want to make sure 6.75. So it saved it as 9.246. So that still should be fine as the print and cut area. Then you click on make it. And 
there you have it. And you can see that the um, the rendering here is not as high quality as it will be when it prints out. And you also will not see the little bubble around because the bubble is white and your paper is white. So you're not going to see it, but it will cut around and have that little bubble. Um, so I hope that video was helpful for you on how to make an offset around a set of words in Inkscape and then upload it to Cricut Design Space. Um, if you feel so called, I did start up a Patreon page um, where you can support with one dollar a month and that just helps me to be able to create videos and be able to um be supported in my creative endeavors and the things that I make for you all like these videos and whatnot. So a dollar a month, no obligation if you don't want to. Um, secondly though, there is a printable of the month club on my Patreon page. It's $3 a month and every month I'll upload a printable. It could be planner inserts. It could be a printable quote. It could be printable journaling cards. It could be printable stickers. It could be like a little ebook. It could be Anything printable that you find on my blog or in my shop is going to be an exclusive item um, for my Patreon people for my Printable of the Month Club. It's not going to be something that someone can get on for free on my blog. It's not going to be something that someone can purchase in the shop. It's going to be something designed specifically for the uh, Printable of the Month Club. So. If you sign up right now, I believe there are at least two. I'm not sure when this video is going to go up. I may have uploaded the third printable. So for $3, if you sign up right now for $3, you already have access to three printables. Um, so then you're going to have access to this ever-growing library of printables. So that's enough for me selling that. Um, but I do also have in my shop now printable stickers that you can cut with your Cricut Explorer as well. So all of those things, I will leave links to all of those things down below. Don't forget to join the Cricut Ready stickers group on Facebook where we talk about how to do things, tips and tricks, information. There's free stickers on there as well. Um, you know, I just love providing things for you and your support like on Patreon or just watching the videos, sharing the videos with your friends and just actually making things and sharing them with me. I love it. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> it's literally my favorite thing ever is to see what you all make and, and how, you know, this community can help you. So, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give a like and subscribe. I'd love for you to stick around. I have tons more Cricut Design Space videos on my channel. Um, if you have any specific questions, go ahead and leave them in the leave them in the comments, and I will talk to you in my next video. Bye.